Over the last year and a half, I've been pushing AI to master Mario Kart. And let me tell you, the evolution has been mind-blowing. In the past few weeks, I've executed a full throttle overhaul by rewriting the source code for the third time. It's been countless hours and sleepless nights to write a flawless new system, but I'll even make a promise to you guys. If we hit 100,000 subscribers, I'll finally release my source code so that you can create your very own Mario Kart AI. Throughout this video, you'll witness my brand new AI learning to play Mario Kart on Mario Circuit. Now I know this might not sound groundbreaking, but here's the twist. This AI will be trained in real time as you watch the video. If you're new here, be sure to check out my other videos to get a sense of the journey so far. Let's rewind to June 2022, where the journey all began. I stumbled upon a game-changing discovery, the Dolphin Emulator, which allowed me to play Wii games on my computer. Little did I know, this discovery would lead to an exciting venture, getting AI to interact with the emulator and making my dream of having an AI play Mario Kart a reality. However, the initial steps in crafting the first version of this AI were far from a walk in the park. It took me a gruelling month of relentless research, development, and more than a few moments of frustration where I felt like banging my head against a wall. But in the end, all that hard work and perseverance paid off as I was finally able to get something working. The initial version was, well, let's just say it was pretty awful. There were three main problems I had to overcome to get things going, and I managed to muster up a uniquely terrible yet working solution to each of them. First on my checklist was finding a way for the AI to provide controller inputs to the emulator. Since humans usually interact with games by pressing keys on a keyboard, my initial solution was a tad naive. I simply gave the AI control over my keyboard. I mean, what could possibly go wrong? Well, as you might imagine, it wasn't the most elegant solution, but it did actually get the job done, which was more than enough for me. My second major challenge was finding a way to feed the game's screen to the AI. My initial idea was to use Python code to capture the emulator's window. While it kind of worked, it was really slow, so I quickly gave up on that idea. The next idea, surprisingly, was to capture the entire screen. You might be thinking that capturing everything would be slower than just one window, but it turned out to be much faster, so that's the route I took. However, there was a caveat. Dolphin Emulator ran significantly slower when maximized rather than minimized, which required some creative problem solving. I decided to keep the Dolphin window minimized, but fix its position to the top left corner, and then crop the screenshots to focus on this small area of the screen. This solution was again far from ideal. It meant I had to keep the emulator on screen at all times, rendering my PC essentially unusable while the AI was training. To add to the frustration, if the Dolphin emulator ever lagged, it meant my AI would also receive laggy input. So needless to say, there was ample room for improvement. Lastly, I had to find a way to reward the AI for its performance, or lack thereof. My innovative solution involved using the minimap, since I discovered that I could track Funky Kong's position on the map by scanning the screen for the iconic image of Funky Kong's face. To make this process even more interesting, I created a custom editor that allowed me to draw checkpoints and out-of-bound regions on the map, which made things a lot faster. This way, I could reward the AI for successfully hitting new checkpoints and conversely penalize it by sending it back to the start when it ventured into an out-of-bounds area. With all these creative solutions put together, my first version of the AI was born, and to my astonishment, it actually worked. In fact, I managed to create two videos using this system, despite all of its shortcomings. However, for all the challenges I've mentioned, the most frustrating limitation was the system's speed. In reinforcement learning, being able to learn from a vast number of frames quickly is crucial. Unfortunately, my setup was anything but fast. The emulator ran at about 30 frames per second, but in reinforcement learning, it's customary to only use every fourth frame, meaning the system processed a sad 7.5 frames per second, a number which I would work relentlessly to improve over the next year and a half. After overcoming the challenges of allowing an AI to interact with the emulator, the final piece of the puzzle was finding the right AI. One of the most popular AI algorithms to date is called Rainbow Deep Q Learning, a sophisticated evolution of the simpler DeepQ learning algorithm. It combines various improvements to enhance its performance, making it a promising choice. However, there was a catch. 
Rainbow DeepQ Learning was primarily designed to work with images that were 84 by 84 pixels, which posed a significant problem. As you might have noticed, Wii games aren't exactly known for their square aspect ratios. So to add one more pile of trash onto this dumpster fire of a solution, I simply resized the Wii's images to be 84 by 84, even though it meant the image was horribly distorted. After all of that pain though, this actually worked. After a month of development, I was finally able to get an AI to successfully play Luigi Circuit, even if it did take a total of 35 hours to complete its first race. If you like what I do here, be sure to like, comment and subscribe as it really helps me out. If you've been following my channel, you might have noticed a significant gap of 8 months in my uploads not too long ago. The primary reason behind this hiatus was my strong desire to revamp and upgrade my setup. The initial solution I had cobbled together was, to put it mildly, quite hideous. I was acutely aware that I needed to discover a more efficient method for supplying screen data to the AI and allowing it to control the game. For months, I delved deep into online forums and scoured countless Discord servers in a relentless search for a superior solution. Unfortunately, despite my efforts, I found myself coming up empty-handed. But after months of getting nowhere, an unexpected turn of fate occurred. Like an angel descending from above, I received a message on GitHub from a C++ developer named Felt. Felt had made significant modifications to the Dolphin emulator's source code, enabling me to access the game's screen information and its internal memory directly from Python. These enhancements brought a dramatic improvement to the system's performance, making it much more reliable, less prone to lag and considerably faster. It now ran at a smoother 25 frames per second, a significant leap from the previous 7.5 frames per second. Even with this substantial improvement, my hunger for progress was far from satiated with 25 frames per second, as I had a grander vision in mind, parallelization. I knew that if I could simultaneously run multiple instances of Mario Kart, I could significantly accelerate the training process. Achieving this milestone wasn't a walk in the park though. It took weeks of sleepless nights and dedication to get things working, but eventually my hard work paid off and I triumphantly reached the point where I could run multiple games in parallel. However, the reality wasn't as effective as I'd initially hoped. You see, when it comes to training an AI and running multiple games simultaneously, my PC really started to feel the strain, massively bottlenecking progress. Despite this though, I managed to achieve a total of 40 frames per second, another substantial leap forward. Not long after this, I devised a straightforward yet somewhat costly solution. I bought a new PC. I proceeded to construct an absolute behemoth of a machine, featuring an RTX 4090, a 13th generation Intel i9 processor, and a whopping 64 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM, capable of ripping through the training process faster than ever before. As soon as I switched to the new PC, the frames per second instantly near doubled, skyrocketing to 70 frames per second, at least in my mind justifying the ludicrous cost of the new computer. To complement the potential of my new upgraded setup, I set out to enhance the very core of my AI. My journey led me to a research paper titled fast and efficient training of Rainbow DQN, which I swiftly integrated into the system, providing a remarkable boost in efficiency and overall performance. I also had a breakthrough regarding the image input for the AI. I finally figured out how to provide the AI with non-square images and started using the new size of 140 by 75 pixels. While this is still relatively small, this format eliminated the unsightly distortion giving the AI a fighting chance to play some good Mario Kart. Fast forward to the present day, and what you've witnessed in my last four months of content is the version I've just been talking about. This was first showcased in the video titled AI Learns Mario Kart in 7 Hours, where it completed Luigi Circuit over 5 times faster than in the original system, marking a significant milestone in the evolution of my AI Mario Kart project. Despite all of these notable improvements, my quest wasn't over yet. Over the last month, I rolled up my sleeves and dived back into the code, aiming for something even quicker. As I tackled this rewrite, I had two primary issues at the forefront of my mind. My first major concern revolved around the sequential nature of the learning and acting processes. To break it down, what was happening was that the AI would select an action, then that action would be executed in the Dolphin emulator, and only afterwards the AI would undergo a learning update 
where it would glean insights from its past experiences. While this approach is quite common in reinforcement learning, it's inherently slow because each step follows the other. To address this issue, I rewrote the code so that the learning and action execution could happen concurrently. This optimization proved to be highly effective, especially considering that the emulator predominantly utilizes the CPU, while AI learning takes place on the GPU. This more efficient process made better use of my PC's resources and significantly enhanced the overall process. My second challenge was related to how multiple emulator instances worked. In the previous version, the AI would generate an action for each of the different emulators, and then each of the emulators would process one step forward. The issue of this approach was that in order to progress to the next step, we had to wait for all of the emulators to finish their processing. This meant that even if one emulator was lagging behind, it would slow down the entire system. This slowdown was most noticeable when the AI met an unfortunate fate and needed to be sent back to the starting line. This operation took significantly longer than processing a regular frame, so every time the AI restarted, it put a significant strain on the system's speed. In the new version, I successfully rewrote the system, breaking free from the constraint where different emulators had to wait for each other. This optimization allowed them to operate independently and proceed at full speed, regardless of what was happening in the other instances. After all these improvements, the system speed reached an impressive total of 120 frames per second. This marks a 16-fold increase in speed compared to the initial version of the system. Having the new ultra-fast system in place was huge, but it also raised the bar for what I wanted from my AI. To meet this higher standard, I decided it was time for some much-needed updates. The first significant change I aimed to implement was known as distributional reinforcement learning. In my previous videos, you might have noticed that the AI typically predicts a single numerical value for each action, reflecting how favorable it considers that action to be. Whilst this method works reasonably well, it falls short in capturing the element of randomness, such as the chance of unpredictable events occurring. For instance, picture this scenario in Mario Kart. I might highly rate the action of moving forward because I'm close to finishing the race. However, I might also factor in a 5% chance that a blue shell might hit me before I hit the finish line, causing me to reconsider the value of moving forward. Using a single number for each action doesn't effectively represent this nuanced decision-making process. Distributional reinforcement learning, on the other hand, addresses this limitation. It allows the AI to represent and work with probability distributions, enabling it to factor in the element of chance. As you can see on screen now, this approach brings an added layer of sophistication to the AI's decision making it, as it navigates a challenging course like Rainbow Road. Besides implementing distributional reinforcement learning, I introduced a range of other smaller yet impactful improvements. One of these techniques is Munchausen reinforcement learning, which has nothing to do with Munchausen syndrome, but rather it draws inspiration from an old book called The Surprising Adventures of Baron Munchausen. Another notable achievement is the substantial improvement in memory efficiency. The AI, which previously required a hefty 55 gigabytes of RAM, now operates smoothly with just 8 gigabytes. This change is particularly thrilling because it opens the door to potentially providing the AI with larger images. Previously, the AI faced significant challenges with games that featured intricate details or small elements due to the limitations of its low image resolution. However, with this enhanced memory efficiency, there's a possibility of expanding its capabilities and playing games that were once deemed too challenging. And that brings us to the journey of how the AI you've been watching came to life. The AI you've witnessed throughout this video was trained in a mere 40 minutes of real time. This marks a monumental leap forward from the 35 hours it used to take in the first version to learn Luigi Circuit. This remarkable progress is a testament to the power of continuous innovation and modern technology. This newest version of the system and AI is definitely what I'm going to be using in my videos for the foreseeable future. I hope you enjoyed this different style of video, and be sure to check out my other videos for more insights into this fascinating journey.